So good morning Canberra. Um, it may be early morning for you and it's early morning for me here in London on Friday when I'm recording this piece. And if I look a little bit tired it's because I was up until midnight last night helping to crowdsource um, my Member of Parliament's expenses on The Guardian's website in what is a ph phenomenal piece of openness in an attempt to counter the large-scale redacting of public information. And for me, personally, this is a, a vital staging point on a long journey that the British government has come over the last uh, three or four years as we move towards what we might call Government 2.0. This journey began for me back in 2004 when uh, a bunch of uh, highly technical people who would call themselves geeks uh, approached me when I was working at Downing Street and said, uh, look, this Prime Minister's official spokesman you have who talks to the press every day, why isn't his stuff more readily available online? And I said, well, you know, I think it is. We put it online every day in a Word document and it has a, a static uh, web address. And they got very excited about this. This was in what, February 2004, I think. And uh, they rang me up the next day on my mobile on Saturday morning. And they said, well, we've been up all night and we've been scraping your prime minister's website. And we've created a, a live blog of the prime minister's official spokesman's feed. This thing, we're calling it Downing Street Says. So I said to these guys, well, hang on a minute, just whoa up, you know, slow down, because um, uh, a lot of people aren't going to be happy about this. And uh, they said to me, well, you can't stop us. We've done it now. We've just scraped your website and we've created a completely new uh, data product um, in a sort of uh, yar sucks boo way. And we just had to roll with that. And that was probably what uh, DowningStreetSays.com was probably the world's first modern era cooperative mashup between uh, the government and third sector technology experts. And this began for me an investigation of the potential of what we now call Government 2.0. Um, and we were able, in that example, to evidence what the technologies could do. We weren't talking in abstract. We were actually showing people what could be done with these technologies to improve quality of public information. And as any country goes on a journey towards Government 2, that is, has to be at the heart of what one does. You have to show and demonstrate the benefits to real people's lives, to openness, to accountability, to scrutiny of these technology products. One must not ever talk in abstracts about semantics or um, about data formats or about scraping or about feeds. In order to succeed in Government 2.0, to convert people who don't, won't understand the technology, you have to talk in hard examples. And in Britain, we found one of the most persuasive arguments for Government 2.0 has been the colossal communities online that people have created off their own bat, um, perfectly ordinary people um, in their own living rooms or in their own working from the laptops in their own bedrooms, huge communities of hundreds of thousands or millions of people who discuss public policy issues um, openly on the web in huge communities such as uh, Netmums, such as uh, Wild About Britain, uh, such as Money Saving Expert, such as the, and such as they work for you, where we see very, very contentious public policy issues and public policy advice being discussed live in real time by people who are actually having problems in their daily lives and helping each other solve their problems. Netmums, one of our, our biggest communities here, has well over 600,000 members. Uh, at one point was growing at 20,000 new members a month. And in that, young parents discuss the challenges of parenting, um, a, a classic area where the state is normally doling out advice. But in the Netmums community, we can see people giving each other advice, helping each other out spontaneously, altruistically, for free, and creating new types of public information. And so the challenge for us in government was then to say, well, what's our role in that? Um, if two people are giving each other bad health advice that will be damaging to a child, should the state intervene in that discussion? How should the state intervene? What are the correct modes of behaviour for us in those forums? And it was communities like Netmums that um, kicked off for us a strand of work that we call the power of information. Back in 2007, I was the civil servant who commissioned that work on behalf of ministers um, to actually explore what the potential was for these huge user-generated forums, how the government should interact with them, and also what the potential was for large-scale um, data manipulation and reuse. And that work over the last few years has come to some pretty straightforward answers um, that are challenging for bureaucracies to adjust to, but are common sense, really. Um, we've said to ourselves, well, civil servants, of course, should intervene or um, intercede in online discussions if it's relevant to delivering their public policy objectives. But they should do so um, in a proportionate um, and measured way, in a professional way, 
and using the right skills and methods of behaviour that suit that, that constituency. We found, though, that civil servants did not take easily to taking part publicly um, in large-scale online uh, discussions. Um, the, what we were advocating essentially went against a direction, the last 15 years' direction of travel in government comms, uh, a direction of travel that suggested that the number of civil servants who speak publicly, or public servants that speak publicly, um, should be quite tightly constrained into formal, highly professional press, press functions. Now, this was a very rational approach when the government was faced with only a relatively small number of media outlets, but it's an approach that's increasingly hard to maintain in a world where there are millions of media outlets, where every citizen is essentially their own media outlet. So we found quite strong uh, cultural challenges to uh, civil servants engaging in online discussions freely and spontaneously and professionally. We also, uh, in the UK, apart from having these very, very large discussion forums, which are not unique, I'm sure they, they exist in Australia uh, as well, and we know they exist in America and in France, in Germany and in Scandinavia. Um, the UK is also very lucky to have um, a remarkably talented band of um, uh, web entrepreneurs, social web entrepreneurs, who are extremely highly skilled in their use of data. So uh, if anyone were to look at uh, They Work For You, uh, or Write To Them, or WhatDoTheyKnow.com, you will find an organisation called My Society that has made enormous strides in taking publicly available data and information and representing it in a way that works brilliantly on the web. They took, in the case of Parliament, remarkably obtuse and hard to access parliamentary publishing of Hansard, the official record of the debates in the House, and turned it into something that is a joy to use, that is incredibly easy to search, that is more user orientated than the sort of 19th century traditions that our parliament was using. And that gave us another example that we could use in government to communicate to people um, that what the benefits of data mashing. Rather than talking obtrusely about this repurposing of data, we were able to show clearly um, and in a way that politicians understood what the potential for this data reuse was. And during the course of this power of information journey in which we um, involved Tom Steinberg, one of the founders of My Society, and Tom Lusmore, another uh, My Society founder, um, we have come to a point where the debate has advanced out of what you might call, if you'll forgive the phrase, geek corner, into the mainstream of political debates, where the Prime Minister himself, Gordon Brown, the leader of the opposition, David Cameron, are both talking in strongly positive terms about the merits of these kinds of data transparency. Tom Steinberg even features in a book written by the Prime Minister just before uh, he came to power. Um, and that has allowed us to take further and greater steps by constantly demonstrating uh, the potential of these things, by engaging experts uh, to give us advice through the Power of Information Task Force. We have most recently been able to engage uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, uh, the founder of the World Wide Web in Britain, to, ex to lead a, a, a fan fantastic strand of work on a product we're calling, uh, we'll, we will probably call data.gov.uk, um, where public, public sector data is uniformly presented online in a way that it can be repurposed. And this goes back to where I started uh, this, this message this morning. Last night I was up crowdsourcing um, uh, The Guardian's republishing of MPs' expenses. Um, it wasn't just me doing it. Within a matter of hours, The Guardian had managed to um, uh, capture data about several tens of thousands of documents through sheer user effort of unpaid people. Their model of journalism was fundamentally different to that of the newspaper that had previously published the allegations, the, the, the expenses claims, the Daily Telegraph. The Telegraph used, a, in a brilliant piece of journalism, used a traditional investigative method. They piled up the data for themselves and teams of their journalists poured through it over many weeks. But The Guardian has gone in a completely different direction. It has piled up the data and made it publicly available and asked its readers and interested parties to sort through the data for them. And this presents a very exciting future for the public sector and for government. It's an exciting future, but like any exciting thing, it's challenging as well and in part frightening. Um, it, we're talking about a future of far greater openness and far greater transparency than we've ever known before. And that will at times be uncomfortable. But we think in the UK, with the power of information work, which is freely available online, and you can, you're very welcome to Google it up. I've spoken to Lindsay Tanner's people about it. I've spoken to a number of Australian government officials about it who've been here and via um, Cisco's um, telepresence uh, service. We think in the power of information report, we have set out a set of ground rules that were any bureaucracy or any government to follow them would help them prepare for this exciting and challenging future of greater openness, greater scrutiny, greater accountability, and greater workforce participation. And we're absolutely confident in the UK 
that if we pursue um, the trends that are emerging in government too now, we will lead to better government that is far more open, is far more accountable, and far more responsive to people's needs. But most importantly, it will be a government that will keep up with people's expectations in a modern media age. So I hope you have a good day. You've got some fantastic speakers there, one or two of whom I've met. I'm delighted to see you've got uh, Headshift in the room. I'm very pleased to see you've got Cisco uh, talking as well, um, very, very uh, enlightened company in this area. And I hope you have a good day. And I hope to see you indeed in England sometime soon.